Hi, so recently I came across this thing. It's a floating pen. It's actually kind of a cool science toy, but I was looking at it because I thought it might be usable as a bearing for things like um, solar motors, induction motors, because it's floating on the magnetic field, or mysteriously in air. And this little point here, which is the ball in the ballpoint pen, is the pivot point. So it's quite a low friction pivot bearing we could use for something else. So I decided to make one of my own because I was looking at the internet and the prices were either so high I would be worried about cutting it to pieces or so low it's just too flimsy to do a job that I wanted to do with it and there was no adjustability. So that made me look at actually making my own. Now when I was looking at that there was a, a lack of information on what were the key points of constructing something like this but I read up on that and the key points are that these support magnets here have to be the same distance apart as the hidden magnets in the barrel of the pen. The two magnetic fields here form a valley, and the pen rests in the valley. That valley gets deeper the further apart those support magnets are, and more shallow the nearer they are. So we can add weight there, but get it level by moving those magnets in and out. To a degree, obviously, if we move them too far in, the valley disappears and the thing will roll off. But we have a degree of adjustability there so that we can add weight to the thing and still get stuff to work and level it up by adjusting it, which is all very cool. And the third and final key point is that all the poles need to face in the same direction. Because this pen actually wants to rush off in that direction, it's being stopped by that angle. So those are the three key points to constructing it. Now obviously, once I put that together, I thought, hey, that would be kind of a cool kit. So we put together a kit, and that's on sale in the shop, and there's a link in the description. Now, what's in the kit is your acrylic base, straw, a pen, some magnets, a couple of angles, this is support angles, little blocking bracket, small propeller, foam square, and some instructions. And that's all we're going to need. Now, you can use your own pen if you like. If you've got a favourite pen and you just want the science toy, use your own pen. We're going to use this later in other experiments where we do things like making an electrostatic motor. So we've provided the pen so that you can follow on those experiments if you want. In addition to that, you're going to need some other little bits and pieces. Not much. You need something to cut it with, as a scissors or a knife. I prefer a knife, but use scissors. The pliers are to pull the pen to pieces because it's a little tight, but it will pull to pieces quite easily, especially with pliers. The marker pen, a ruler, and some glue. Now I've got crazy glue, ordinary glue, and double-sided tape. Don't need to use all three. One of them's fine. And then this, which is a four millimeter bot. It'll become clear what I'm using that for very, very soon, and you'll be able to use something else, or not at all, depending on what you want to do. So the first job, really, is to take our bit of straw and cut it off at seven centimeters. And what we're going to do is insert the little magnets into there and insert that into the pen, and that will become the hidden magnets. The little magnets are these four millimeter ones that we've got there. They're two millimeters thick, four millimeters across, and it's going to be next to impossible to tell which way around they are in terms of poles once you get them separated, unless you just put a little mark on one of the poles so that you know which way around they're going to be. So I've put a black mark on those poles. And then I'll know which way around they are when it comes to assembling the thing. <coughs> and we'll save those for later. Now those poles, those magnets are two millimetres each. So that stack is four millimetres. So if we get that and mark off at four millimetres, or we can just lay those out and mark against that so that we know what four millimetres is. I'm going to put a little slot in the straw at four millimetres. Not all the way through, just part the way through. And then just past the four millimetre mark that you've put, just bend the straw in. What that will do is stop the magnets zipping towards each other when you put them into the straw, because these are neo magnets, so they're relatively strong, and they will want to zip down towards each other once they're actually in the straw. Okay, this is where this comes in handy. 
That'll sit rather nicely on there and allow me to manipulate it to get it into the end of the straw without getting super glue all over my fingers. So if I put a spot of super glue on that and pop it into the end of the straw. I'm just checking to make sure I'm getting it the right way around. There we go. And put that to one side to let the super glue dry. Okay, now I'm going to use the pliers to pull the pen apart. Don't need that bit, do need these bits. If you pull that bottom off, the refill will come out. So we need the refill, the bottom, the barrel, and the top cap there. Those are the bits we actually need. I've cut my finger. <coughs> so a quick bandage. Care of that. Okay. Now we need to cut seven centimeters outside of that barrel. When we do that, then the ink is going to go up everywhere and we want to stop that doing it. So you use a small plug of something like a bit of plasticine, a bit of blue tack, just something to plug up that end because that's the end where you need to keep the ink so you can reuse the ink. And I'm just going to get a bit of blue tack. And about four millimeters from four centimeters, sorry, from the end of the ball to where the ball is, cut off four centimeters. Grab yourself a little bit of blue tack. And just bump the end. And that'll stop the ink growing absolutely everywhere. Then we get our straw back, measure up to where our seven centimeters is. Get that off. We don't need that bit because we're going to replace it with the straw. Got a little bit of ink left in here. You can either wash it out or bung it up. It's up to you. I'll put a little bung on there, stop the ink going everywhere. And then we're ready to reassemble the pen. So the pen gets reassembled by popping that back into there. Pay attention to which way around this is going, so that's the marked end going towards the pen nib. Pop that back in, and then put that back on. And that's the pen adjusted with the hidden magnets. So the next thing to do is to make the base. And the base is really quite easy. Take your angle. I put a bit of double-sided tape on this angle, incidentally. You can use just glue it, or you can double-side it with it. So you can stick with some double-sided tape and pop that right at the end, centered to the block. This one needs to go seven centimeters away. Now the whole straw length is seven centimeters, but they are two millimeters thick either end. So it's four millimeters of the magnets. So, so from center to center, we have to take away four millimeters. So it's uh, 6.6 .6 centimeters is where that needs to go. All of this is in your instructions, incidentally. So we just measure that up and put it in at 6.6. .6. Make sure that's 6.6. Good enough. And squeeze that down. Now our pen is going to go that way, and the black dot was facing that way. So I put a black dot on these, and what I want to do is just peel that off, making sure the black dot faces in that direction, and they will hold each other.
I just have to put them on there to hold each other, no glue necessary. And that means they're adjustable. Incidentally, neomagnets are easier to separate if you slide them than if you try to pull them apart. So don't try to pull them apart, try to slide them apart. Okay, so now if we hold the pen on there, we should be able to get a response out of that. There it is. There we go. Just about there. That's it. So you can see where I have to put that angle now, which is just there. And if we want to mark that off, we'll be able to see where to position it. And I've got some double-sided tape on the bottom of this blocking angle. And I put that on there. And that should float. Unless, of course, I got it too near. There we go. There we go. A little bit of adjustment, and we can get that to magically float. Now we put this stuff in, because if we Put our little foam on there. We can stick a propeller on it. We've added a little bit of weight onto this, so it will sink down with the back end. So if we push those in a little bit, that will climb up again. And the really cool thing about this, I'm not sure how successful it's going to be to see, you blow straight down against it because it's a propeller. You can set the pins then spinning. I actually think that's really kind of cool. So it's quite a cute science toy. Let's try that again, so that angle. There we go. You paint a little design on there, it will spin. Uh, it's quite a cute science toy, and in future videos we're going to use that for other things. So, I hope that was fun. Remember, the kit is for sale on the store. I hope you buy one and have a bit of fun there and make yourself a nice little toy. Uh, if you do, as I say, there will be other experiments with it later, but I hope you enjoyed that, and thank you very much for watching.